Today's video contains minor spoilers for Thrawn Treason, though I will go out of my way to avoid talking about specific plot points as much as possible. If you'd like to experience the book before watching the video, you can do what I do, which is listen to it on audiobook, which has fully produced music, sound effects, and voice acting. You can get it for free with audibletrial.com slash Eckhart's Ladder. With that being said, let's run the intro. Star Wars space battles are typically fought within or sometimes at the very edge of visual range, meaning that two capital ships shooting each other can at least see their enemy. That being said, visual information is almost never enough to win a battle. For example, ships may be moving into position from out of range, starfighters are too small to see, conditions may limit visibility, or you need sensor data for your targeting computers. The problem is that by using your ship systems from active scanning to propulsion, you create a signature which can then be detected by your enemy, assuming at least that you don't have a stealth system which in turn limits your ship's functionality. The same is true for starfighters. If they have their systems running, they are most likely detectable by an enemy. So in most cases, when two ships are in combat, they both have their full systems and sensors running. They can detect each other, and it's a battle of tactics rather than stealth. In Thrawn Treason, However, without unnecessary spoilers, the Grand Admiral finds himself in a situation where he needs to launch undetectable fighters to scout out an enemy. Given our understanding of sensors and the concepts we just talked about, we would assume this is impossible. And even if you launch your fighters, briefly use the engine, then turn them off, they will still be detectable on scopes. Thrawn, of course, has developed a strategy to get around this issue, which I'll call the Thrawn Catapult. So here's how it works. A TIE Fighter, or in Thrawn's case a TIE Defender, is dropped out the ventral hangar of a Star Destroyer, completely inert, all systems turned off, with only passive sensors and basic directional communication systems online. The Starfighter is allowed to drift a little bit from the Star Destroyer before it is grabbed by the capital ship's tractor beam, specifically a tractor beam near the front of the Star Destroyer. The TIE is pulled in towards the ship, but before collision, the Star Destroyer disengages its tractor beam and inclines its nose slightly, enough for the TIE to miss, but to continue catapulted on its vector. Because they're in a vacuum, the little bit of velocity imparted by the tractor beam pulling the fighter in is enough to keep it moving without having to use its engines. Thrawn shows us two implementations of this tactic. The first is in the situation I described above. A Star Destroyer, on the edge of a system, uses ties to scout an enemy and generally to form a complete tactical map of the battlefield before an upcoming engagement. What's notable here is that Thrawn is able to use the catapult while maintaining mostly a dark Star Destroyer, i.e. without giving up too much sensor data himself, as apparently the tractor beam and the slight maneuvering needed can be done while remaining at least somewhat hidden. The downside here is that the catapult won't work if the ties need to traverse crazy distances, it will just take too long. But the upside is that pilots are able to use very simple communication techniques to speak with the Star Destroyer without giving away their position. The second implementation comes mid-battle. Thrawn has the captain of the Chimera perform the stealthy launch during the battle itself, and the ties are able to covertly approach the enemy vessel where they can then activate and inflict up-close damage. Now the usability of this tactic may be limited, as Thrawn uses it here specifically because he knows his enemy is over-reliant on sensors and instrument data. Others are able to actually spot the fighters coming, but it works in this case. All in all though, it's a pretty ingenious strategy, and it's interesting to think of other ways the catapult could be accomplished without having to use this weird tractor beam maneuver. One would be through an internal launching system, like we see in Battlestar Galactica. Having the fighters launched with with compressed air or whatever else, from the internal mechanism of the ship without actually turning on could be useful. Basically, you would have the starfighter launched, but not active. Also interesting is that this tells us a lot about how tractor beam 
systems operate. They clearly can only pull, not manipulate objects freely in space. If the latter was the case, the Star Destroyer could simply sling the ties, instead of having to pull them in, then move out of the way. That technique, for the record, is described as being reasonably difficult to pull off, or at least there needs to be a good level of bridge cohesion. But that's all I have to say about the Theron catapult. Let me know what you think of this technique down in the comments. And just a reminder that the complete audiobook is available on Audible, and you can listen for free with audibletrial.com slash Eckhart's Letter. Or you can choose another Star Wars audiobook, Halo audiobook, or really whatever else you'd like. Today's question comes from Nicholas Farrell, who asks what manner of ship-based combat group would you use to disrupt the Rebel Alliance? I think it's pretty simple. The deadliest Imperial battle group that I can imagine as a Rebel commander would be an Interdictor, probably not a full Star Destroyer, but something a bit more mobile like an Interdictor cruiser, protected by three or four anti-fighter frigates, maybe Lancers, as well as something carrying Starfighters, and of course a Star Destroyer to bring the whole group together. This eliminates the main strength of the Alliance because it doesn't allow them to do hit and run tactics, it minimizes the potency of their fighters because we've got extra fighters of our own and enough screening ships to protect both the interdictor and the star destroyer slash carrier and we also maintain imperial strength in the form of the ISD but let me know I can do a whole video on this topic if that's something you guys would be interested in seeing if you guys would like me to answer one of your questions in the future leave it down in the comment section with the hashtag ask Egg. make sure you subscribe and turn the notification bell on so if I do answer it you don't miss it by missing the video anyway until next time guys as always, this has been Eckhart's Ladder. Have a great week, and may the Force be with you.